Welcome back to All the Work, a video blog documenting the restoration of my 1988 Ski Supreme. My name is Joe. I am a stay-at-home dad with a 33-year-old ski boat in bad need of restoration. The driver's side floor had come unglued from the stringers and there was wet flotation foam bowed astern. Did I have any boat work experience? No. Did I know what I needed to do? No. Did YouTube give me all the information they needed? Absolutely. I cut giant holes in the walls to make more storage. Then I cut out the floor to find the real problems such as sopping wet flotation foam, fiberglass cracks, thick layers of glue that weren't sticking anymore, so much flotation foam, sanding, pouring new flotation foam, fiberglassing, more fiberglassing, more sanding, then finally putting the floor back in for more fiberglassing. Then a sketchy boat lift to pour flotation foam all the way through it, then paint and put the engine back in and store it for the winter. Now I am reaching the end of spring and I am getting ready to paint the top side of this thing finally. To paint, I decided to use the Alexial Yacht Coatings 501 top coat with the rolling additive. I had intended to spray when I started, however, after watching Andy from Boatworks Today use the rolling additive, link here, I decided that rolling was much more in my experience zone and he got it to work so well I said it's good enough for me. I followed Andy's protocols exactly in regards to the sand and grits and the super special mohair rollers that he suggested. went around the boat one more time with the total boat de-waxer and surface prep trying to get as clean as absolutely possible. I attempted to use this protocol of using a paint filter to pour the paints in However, it took so long and so much of the paint was sticking in the filter, I was concerned I was going to run out of materials, so I abandoned that process, just chose to pour the paint directly into the cup. For the first coat, I mixed 8 ounces of the 501 top coat, 8 ounces of the 501 reducer, with 3.4 milliliters of the rolling additive. After stirring, I let the paint set for 15 minutes so the additive could do its thing. I used a tack cloth to clean the bow of any final dust. wrapped the mohair roller in painter's tape and tore it off to clear that of any extra debris. Then I added 8 milliliters of the top coat reducer, stirring thoroughly. I poured small amounts of the mixed paint into the tray so the full batch could stay covered to prevent evaporation of the reducer. I did my best to move the roller slow and work in small 2-4 to four foot sections depending on the width.
used a soft bristle paintbrush to give a nice clean edge above the rub rail. After I had the entire boat painted, I went back around and did little touch up work and made sure that I had painted all the little grooves in the beveled edges that are around the outside of it. Once I was done painting the boat, I used a small sample of paint, poured some metallic flake in it, and did a little test paint session on the panel. My hope is that I can get a little sparkle on this boat, even with the roller. I finished painting around 11.30 at night. The next morning I was up early so I could get the second coat on before my wife had to leave for work. Unfortunately, I left a light on in the garage overnight and there were a dozen flies that dive bombed the paint. I did my best to pick them out and hope that the next coat would cover what I missed. I had quite a bit of paint left over after the first coat. So for this coat, I did five ounces of 501 top coat, five ounces of the converter, and 1.8 milliliters of the rolling additive. I stirred it well, then let it sit with a paper towel and box of gloves covering it. I used a new mohair roller and made sure to tape it off and peel the tape off two or three times. Then I went in and drank coffee for 15 minutes. I added five ounces of the converter and stirred well. I'm being careful to limit my lap marks to places where sea deck or the windshield will cover. Around the rails is a good spot where the sea deck will cover, I can lap there, and then I try and stop my roller right where the windshield will come down as I'm inside and then I move outside and finish from the nose. The rolling additive gives the paint a property that all the air bubbles pop out of the surface as it dries in a nice glossy layer. When dry, it resembles a hard candy shell. No sanding or buffing required afterwards. As I was finishing up, my GoPro ran out of memory, and in the spirit of all the work, I have dubbed in the painting from the night before so you can get a sense of how long I was truly out there and watch me, in replay, go back around the boat and give a complete paint job. After the second coat of paint, I let the boat sit for 24 hours. Day 109 was a Saturday, so I pushed it out into the driveway for a final round of sanding. Andy's protocol at Boatworks today calls for two coats paint, a light sand with 320 grit, then a third coat of paint, the show coat. Before sanding, I applied a guide coat so I could see imperfections and be sure to sand the entire surface. The paint color I chose was Alexia Yacht Coatings 501 Top Coat Snow White. Without this guide coat, a clean sanding job would have been next to impossible. Use my orbital sander hooked up to the shop vac with 320 grit sandpaper.
not only was it a weekend, we also had grandparents in town. This meant that I could fully commit to bow work for the day. Well, mostly. Between the guide coat and the orbital sanding, I have been working for 3 hours and 25 minutes up until this point. I now have switched over to my hand sanding. I am using 400 grit sandpaper with my little foam pads to bevel out all the rims and edges around the boat. After hand sanding, I use a damp cloth to go around the bow and remove as much dust as possible. After hand sanding, I once again pressure wash the floor of the garage to try and get the dust situation as under control as possible for the third and final coat of paint. I then went around the boat with a dry rag and just did a simple sweeping of the dust. extremely hot day and I am getting very tired of pushing this boat back and forth. Before the final coat of paint, I hung lights around the boat. Good lighting leads to good painting. I also hung up flypaper strips so hopefully there won't be any fly dive bombs on the final coat. I then removed the old tape from the rub rail, which had been sitting in the sun far too long and was mushy and gooey and a really nasty process trying to get it off. Once again, use my wife's indoor vacuum cleaner to try and clean up around the rub rail. I then began the process of re-taping the rub rail and the lower part of the boat, this time using blue tape. Then got back in the boat and shored up all the masking, preparing for the final coat. I went around the boat once cleaning with acetone. The acetone seemed to do a better job picking up the dust and was less abrasive to the paint. So I figured for the first round of clean, I will go with full acetone and then follow with the second full round with the surface waxer and prep.
after a full round of acetone, I went back for another round with the de-waxer and surface primer. See my forearm leaning on the boat right there? That is going to come back to bite me. I reused the old plastic sheeting to once again mask the hull of the boat. Once again, I mixed 5 ounces of the 501 top coat, 5 ounces of the converter, and 1.8 milliliters of the rolling end. Stirred well and let sit for 15 minutes. Lastly, I went around the entire surface with a fresh tack cloth. My camera fell off the mount. Wrap the roller in masking tape to clear of debris. I then poured in five ounces of the reducer and stirred well. At this point, the GoPro died. It had been running continuously since 9 a.m. that morning and either overheated or ran out of storage. In any case, I am showing a replay of the first coat and will leave you with some rambling thoughts about the painting process. I am blown away by how good this paint job came out. All the hours of grinding, cleaning, fiberglassing, fairing, and sanding totally paid off. I have a paint job I am extremely proud of. Are there some glitches I could point out? Indeed there are. However, even the perfectionist in me easily misses them and simply enjoys the finished product. The rolling additive is an awesome thing and I could totally see myself using it in the future with even better results. I mark this as the beginning of the build up process of the boat. So from here on now, I feel like I'm making strides to get it closer to the water. I'm no longer destroying things, I'm no longer cutting holes. I am simply finishing and getting closer and closer to being done. And from here on out, things get really fun. I am extremely proud of everything I've done here. Even though I've admitted to making all my mistakes, I've sometimes been a little self deprecating. This thing has come out unbelievable. It is floating, it's structurally solid. I am really, really proud and really, really happy to share everything that I've got uh, the rest of the way through here, building this boat up. And I hope that you enjoy watching it and would consider subscribing, leaving a comment and tell me what you think or like or any of that other jazz.